Hello, everyone, and welcome uh, to the Saturday edition of Gar Wars Guides. Uh, on Saturdays, we do deep dives into different topics. Uh, today, uh, we are doing... Nope, nope, other way, other way. Oh, dang it, dang it. This is what happens when I mess with my camera. Over there, Gar Wars Guide to Dragon Bait. Man, okay. It's been a, it's been a long week. Uh, bear with me, folks. So... We are going to talk about uh, our Soriel friend. Uh, we're going to talk about not just how to use him as a champion, but also how to unlock him. And in fact, we're going to do his mission live on stream, uh, which is probably where I should start. So uh, without further ado, let's get it on. Uh, so uh, Dragonbait is an evergreen champion. He is available in the Tomb of Annihilation campaign. So we're going to click over here on our second campaign. Uh, uh, he is over in the second part. You can see I've got one little green pip marking that I have one un uncompleted mission. Uh, the developers at CNE were kind enough to go in. Since I've already done this, I did this on uh, live on stream January 1st of this year, which seems like a decade ago. Um, I unlocked Dragonbait uh, on the day he launched. Uh, but they went in and unflagged it for me so we can do it again. This is the vanilla version. So this is your basic version of Dragonbait. Uh, obviously, this is the variant Asuriel's Resolve under the Lost Love Adventure. Um, you do have uh, some requirements to even uh, access this. So you must have completed 35 Tomb of Annihilation Adventures or variants, um, which seems like a lot, but it's, it's actually not that bad. Uh, Azaka, uh, when you unlock her, she unlocks over here uh, in uh, Procession Part 2. She requires, uh, it doesn't show this here, but she requires 30 adventures and variants. So just getting to Azaka uh, will get you 30 out of those 35. And then Azaka has two variants that you have to complete. So that takes you to 32. So then you just need three more uh, to hit up a Soriel's Resolve. Uh, I have a lot of favor here. So uh, this isn't going to affect much of anything, to be honest. Because all you need, uh, what you want to kind of prepare for when you're going to Dragon Bait is making sure you have about... E18 favor, um, that's going to be enough in Tomb of Annihilation to allow you to hit what's called the soft cap on champions, uh, and I'll point that out later. But that's the point where uh, getting more gold isn't going to actually get you any more power for your characters as you're playing through. Um, that's kind of the important part uh, of hitting up Dragon Bait uh, and unlocking him, is just making sure you have enough gold for that. And currently, E18 works just fine. Um, you do have to complete area 14, 400, excuse me, 1400. No, we don't do that. Uh, area 400. Uh, but again, uh, if you can soft cap again around E18, even if you got to farm a little, uh, this is a doable thing. Um, and by the point, by the time you have pushed through here and gotten E18 favor, you will have full blessings in Tomb of Annihilation. You will have them all. That is more than enough. So you will have all the power within this campaign to do this. Uh, we're going to jump in uh, real quick uh, because this it is 400 levels, which I could speed through real quick, but we don't necessarily want to super duper speed because we want to slow down a little bit when we get to the boss. Uh, so we're going to throw on uh, an hour. Yeah, that may even be a little long. We'll see. And in like a half an hour. Uh, and we'll get some speed champions out here to uh, make our journey a little faster. Um, I'm just going to use these champions for the moment. Uh, when we actually get to uh, to Dragon Bait uh, or to the to the final to the final boss, um, we're going to swap in uh, a different group. One thing you'll notice right away, though, no matter what champions you're using, is uh, one of the, the the limitations of this variant is you get Dragon Bait in the front of your formation, but it's not the real Dragon Bait. This is an NPC, uh, so. NPC uh, in your formation rules apply. That means you you can't shield him. You can't really heal him. Um, you know, he just kind of exists. Uh, so we're gonna go through. There's a you can see there's a paragraph here telling you telling you what's going on. Uh, Dragon bait once again accompanies your formation, taking up the front slot. He does not attack, but provides a buff to the party while alive. Uh, the while alive part is key. Um, basically, his function as an NPC uh, in this variant uh, is to give you that buff on all of the non-boss levels, 
so that you can race through them um, and get to the boss and then fight the boss. But when you get to the harder versions of the boss, uh, she can kill him real quick. Uh, and, and you can't rely on his buff at that point. Valindra's Shadow Mantle resurrects once per boss fight for every 50 errors into the venture you are. Each time she resurrects, she greatly increases her damage and health. So what does this mean? This means she's going to spawn in, and we'll see this here when we hit, get to 50 for the first time. She's going to spawn in with 50 armored uh, segments. So she's going to have a health based off uh, her level and off, off how many resurrections she has. But you're going to kill her once. Uh, she's going to die. But the next time you run into her, uh, because you've already killed her once, then she's going to die once and immediately have another... 50 armored uh, health segments to chew through again, and you've got to do it again. Uh, by the time you get to 400, you're going to have to kill her over and over and over and over again. And that's what makes this a challenging variant. That's what tends to uh, prevent people from, from beating this variant, because they can start off usually pretty easily. Uh, you can take out those first 50, 50 health uh, pretty pretty quickly. Uh, but then the next 50 health, because when she resurrects, she gets more damage and more health. Oh, here she is. Let me back up one. Okay, so let's come in with just a couple people here. Uh, boom. So this is Valindra. Let's hide all the clickies. So she's going to have uh, her segmented health, and this is not... Oh, and we died. See, we died that quickly. She's going to have segmented uh, armored health. This is not just, you know, hit once and you're fine. She's not even attacking uh, Dragon Bait. Dragon Bait's going to die to uh, NPCs here, so I guess we are going to have to. We're going to have to bring a uh, tank in. Who should we bring in? Hey, let's let's bring in Dragon Bait <laughs> because of course, because I've already unlocked him, folks. So why not? Uh, and we're going to need to talk about him shortly, anyway. Uh, so we'll be able to kill her this first round pretty quickly. But if you'll notice, she kind of does this attack where she kind of a swipes at you and she hits. But then she throws like a, a meteor swarm down like and just bombs your party with AoE damage. That hits everyone. Um, there isn't a rhyme or reason to it. She just occasionally she will do these base auto attacks and then occasionally she'll do her AoE. And the AoE is really where you run into troubles here. Uh, because, again, as she dies and goes through resurrection, she's going to do more damage. Um, and because she also gets more health, that means it's harder to take off a chunk of her armor. Um, so you get to a point where it's 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 slow going to, to chunk through the armor, and she's doing more damage, and everything just kind of goes downhill from there. Uh, so let's, let's throw this back out. Let's clear this off. And right away, uh, as you can see, one of the first strategies you're going to want uh, to know is having clickers on the field is a big deal. So having some familiars out here, because they're going to keep all these trash mobs from from getting to you and allow all of your attacks from your actual uh, party members to land on Valindra herself. Uh, and that's important because you want, you want her dead. Uh, and the only way you're going to get her dead is if you're actually hitting her. Um, and not only does this mean your basic attacks are going to be hitting her, but any uh, ultimates you fire off are going to hit her instead of those those trash mobs as well. So uh, as we get closer to the end, uh, we'll use fire breath potions for that. Um, but that's a big deal, making sure you have enough damage, uh, which you should have if you're soft capping, uh, to just use a pop a fire breath potion and be able to clear all that trash real quickly. Um, that's going to be a big deal. That's kind of key uh, to beating, one of the keys to beating her. Uh, the other is just having, uh, because of the, of the damage you're taking, is having a decent amount of health and protection for your party. But we'll get more into that as we get closer to the more difficult battles. Uh, again, each time, uh, so Valindra, each time she resurrects, she, she does more damage and she gets more health, and that's in that specific fight. Um, so once you've beaten her and you move on, like, when we get to 100, she resets back to normal, but she's going to she's gonna resurrect once, and she's going to do more damage the next time around. So, you know, it's going to be interesting, right? Uh, each time Valindra resurrects, Dragon Bait's resolve grows stronger, increasing his health, damage reduction, and the buff he provides. Now, again, this is the NPC Dragon Bait they're talking about, because you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally have Dragon Bait in your formation, because this is how you get him, right? Um... So what's going to happen there is up here we have a little hover uh, with the little uh, dragon bait's paw. 
Uh, and it's going to give you information on what's going on. So, Soil's Resolve. Dragon Bait gains more resolve, increasing his health, uh, decreasing his damage taken, and increasing the formation's damage. So right now we see the total number of respawns that Valindra will be at is 2. Uh, Dragonbait's total health is now up to 1,500. His damage reduction is 9, so he, he removes 9 damage per attack. Uh, and his global damage buff is 156.3%. Uh, at the bottom, you see kind of flicking in there every now and then it says respawns left per, for that encounter. That's for when you're actually fighting Dragonbait, or fighting Valindra. Uh, it will give you a total at the bottom so that you can hover over this to know how far you're getting into... Uh, it basically, I think it's, it's popping up because we're on a boss fight. Uh, but when we get to her, it'll show two respawns. And I gotta cough one second. When we get to her, it'll show two respawns. Uh, and after we kill the first, you know, batch of 50 uh, segmented health, um, it will show that we only have one respawn left. And then, or it'll show, actually it'll show, yeah, should show two and then it'll go one and then it'll say zero. And when you beat her after the zero is when she dies. Effectively. So. Uh, that's kind of the basic strategy and, and the rules that they're going on for for Asorial's Resolve. Uh, what really matters here, though, uh, I mean, because of these rules and because of Valinder, like I said, the Dragon Bait thing is nice. Like, it gives you a nice buff. It helps you clear out all the trash mobs uh, as we fly through them uh, right now. Uh, but even after click damage isn't killing them anymore, you can, you know, it helps keep your bud super high and you can pop a Fire Breath Potion and wipe everything out. However, uh, oh, hey, here we go. So, Boom. See how it shows respawns left this encounter. So I'll leave this here and we'll watch it go down if if we can kill her with only four people. Uh, it looks like we're doing an okay job through the first 50 segments, but now we go right into a new batch. So as you see, respawns left this encounter one. So she's going to respawn one more time after we go through this uh, and her health is going to go up. So right now she's at 1.10 E33. Now she's at 2.20 E33. So it's effectively doubling each time she goes down. So you got to have more than enough damage to keep going through uh, and to live through the damage because her damage is going up. And boom, she's done. And now we're at uh, total respawns, five. So the next time we fight her, it's going to be a lot more, right? Uh, it's going to get uh, rough. Uh, that's re Oh, that's respawns for uh, Dragon Bait. So Dragon Bait's lived through those. So his is five. So hers should be... Three the next time? Hmm. If I remember correctly. All right. Uh, normally, I don't pay this close attention to all of the lower levels, and I just blow through, and I only carry about what we get to at the end. And I want to say at 400, it's eight. It should be. So it should be like three on the next one, maybe. Uh, do I have a core going for this run? Hold on. Let's, let's remove any and all cores. Uh, I don't... You don't need them for this. Uh, if you have it when you come here, that's fine. Um, but we did this on my Marzawar Challenge account. For those of you who don't know, uh, I started a new player account. Uh, it is less than two months old, and I've already unlocked Dragon Bait. Um, so uh, I didn't have I didn't have Modrons. Uh, I'll actually go over while we're AFKing through this. I'm going to switch over to that account so you can see my progress over there. Um, so. Um, in terms of two minute, well, here, let's start in Sword Coast. So for on that account, I only had this uh, global damage buff here. So the first, very first tier one from Sword Coast. We didn't really go any further in terms of the globals. Um, in Tomb of Annihilation, again, I said I have everything because uh, at E18 favor, you're maxed out on blessings. I ended up doing it at like 3 E19. Um, so, you know, anything above E18 and you're fine, but I think E18 is the threshold pretty much. That'll let you, you can definitely soft cap before 400. You might have to stop and farm a little bit, but you can do it. Um, this is what I did uh, unlock Dragon Bait with. Um, in terms of power levels, it has been a week since we've done this, so my power levels have gone up a little bit. But just so you know, uh, you can see my average item levels here. They were not very high. I'll go through, I'll tell you who was in my party. I used Esmeralda. We're going to use her today. She only has 11 average item levels. Uh, I used Dinar. He was at 13. We had Nyelian. She's only at 24. 
Uh, we had Calliope, she's only at 20. Uh, I did use Crawl, but he's not required and we're not going to use him today. Um, I had Hitch as my DPS. He only had an average item level of 16. Uh, I believe we had Makosun. We had Tyrolin in his wild shape, for sure. He's only 19. Um, and we used uh, Averin, and he was only 18. Uh, but we're going to use a probably a bit of a weaker form of well. We're going to use, I don't know that it's weaker than this account. We can't get weaker than this account, but we're going to use some basic champions. Uh, because you don't necessarily need all of those. There are a couple that I think you you should have, um, and we'll talk about those. Let's go back over here. So kind of the, the key uh, champions that we're going to end up wanting, and the ones that I think uh, really make make it kind of a walk in the park, uh, not not a slam dunk, not, oh my god, easy breezy. Uh, that's Krull. Krull makes everything easier. Um, but you don't you don't even need Krull for Dragon Bait. Uh, when I unlocked him, like I said, January 1st on this account, uh, I didn't use Krull at all. I had him. I just wanted to see if I could unlock Dragon Bait without him, and I did. Uh, kind of the key, I think, is you need uh, Calliope. Uh, and you need, uh, well, you, you may not need, but you're probably going to want uh, Dinar. Uh, and the reason for this is... Uh, Dinar over Celeste. Dinar can heal everyone in the party. Like every second he tosses out a, a heal over time. And it can target anybody in the party that's lost health. Uh, it is a smaller heal, but you don't need a huge heal because you're backed up with Calliope. And Calliope provides her shields to everyone in the party. Uh, so that's basically a temporary hit point shield above your health. Uh, and the reason why this is good is when Valenter starts throwing down those AoEs, uh, as she gets closer to her last resurrection, um, she's going to be doing more damage than your squishies have health uh, in some cases. Um, so you want to, you can't, you just can't live through that, right? I mean, if they hit you for more than you have health, you're dead. Uh, Calliope prevents that, right? Calliope gives you that shield up above, um, above your health totals and and it's a large amount. It can be up to 200% uh, of your health. So you can go multiple times up if you have a strong enough Calliope. Uh, you, prob you probably won't if you're a new player. Um, but you can give yourself that extra hit points. And when her AoE hits, it's going to chew out of those extra hit points. Uh, anything that goes into your actual health, Dinar is going to start throwing out some hots for. And Calliope is going to replace that shield on you. Uh, and we're going to talk about the, the spec for that to make sure that happens too. Um, flying through this pretty quickly. I mean, we're already at like 200, and we're only 20 minutes in. So this is what speed potions will do for you folks, in case you've been wondering why we're going so fast. We have speed potions and speed champions. Uh, so what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to keep the clickers out, but I'm going to start building the formation, and we're going to start talking about why we're using these specific people. Okay, so slot one, Esmeralda. Boom. Boom. Uh, slot two, Dinar. This is the this is the formation I'm gonna go with. Obviously, you can do whatever you want, uh, but I'll talk about why we're doing this. Uh, we're gonna have Jarlaxle in to start. We're gonna have Calliope in. Um, uh, ideally, we would use Crawl there if you have him, but we're gonna try to do it without. We're gonna have a Hitch as our DPS. And we're gonna have a tier roll here. Uh, who else? We're gonna want Makos, and let's see. And we're gonna throw in. Mm, yeah, let's try Minsk. All right, we're about to die because none of these people have any health. <laughs> so let's level them up here. Uh, Nayeli only gets her health share. So the thing that shares her maximum, her a portion of her maximum health with others, if she's in Oath of Devotion. Health is important here for what should be obvious reasons, but I'll state it again. That big AoE that's coming off Valindra, right? That hits everybody. So we want Oath of Devotion. Uh, and we're going to just go ahead and throw all the points into that. Basically, we're just going to we're gonna get to the soft cap. Should, well, we're close, okay. Not quite high enough. Um, so that's going to give us the health to actually uh, share to all of our party and hopefully keep us alive. Uh 
Now, as you can see now, even our squishies have EO4 health now, and that's all coming from the health share off of Nielli. Uh, that's up here under Oath of Devotion. Uh, Aura of Heroism increases the health of all champions by 25% of Nielli's max health. So that's the important thing. We're also going to want that from Tyrell. In Tyrell, uh, we do that out of Wild Shape. We're going to want him in his Wild Shape form. I'm running Moosrel at the moment. This is his Icewind Dale skin. Or I don't know if it's called Icewind Dale, but it might as well be. Yeah, Icewind Dale Tyrell. All right. Okay, so we've got Moosrel in. So now we've got tons of health. Now what's our squishies at? Now our squishies are at 1 EO5. Um, and we will be able to augment this with health potions if we need it. Um, this is a variant where health potions are... All potions uh, come in super handy. One of the things, uh, if you're in the E18 range when you're attempting this, you're going to want to start off with uh, like an epic gold find, like the, the huge gold find, a large gold find, and then some, some of the medium gold finds, and just get lots of gold coming in so that you can make sure you hit soft cap um, instead of adding them later and you know, you can, you, can, you can just start off with an epic, and then as you get closer, like above 300, you can throw down the bigger ones. But basically, you want to make sure you're hitting soft cap before 400. Uh, as you can note, we're, we're slowing down a little bit um, because she's got a lot of health now. Uh, and we haven't put any damage into our champions, so let's raise that a bit. Let's give our DPS uh, some uh, spec. Uh, so we're going to go charismatic on Hitch. Again, Hitch is an evergreen champion to pick up free by signing up for the newsletter. He is technically a support, but don't let that fool you folks. He's actually a fantastic DPS. And as a new player, uh, after Jarlaxle, he is your next best DPS. He is who you transition to from Jarlaxle. Uh, obviously, it's gear dependent, but uh, I find him to be fantastic. Uh, I'm going to start throwing some people around here uh, into various places. Now, we have uh, Nielli. Uh, Nayeli buffs the column behind her, so we need to put her in the front. The front. Because remember, Dragon Bait's, Dragon Bait's going to die. Uh, <laughs> he will he will die when we get to the end. So we need Nayeli in what is effectively the front column. Um, but we're going to be killing off all of the trash mobs with Fire Breath Potion. And Nayeli, and uh, Valindra, excuse me, isn't going to walk up and smack people. So in reality... You don't need a tank line. You need tanks because you need their health share. But your tanks don't have to be in the front row of your party in this necessarily. Uh, Nayeli does because of the way she plays her buff. But if you're using a different tank that doesn't need to be in front of someone to buff, but just within a couple spaces of them, then they don't need to be in the front line. I know, it's a little crazy, but keep that in mind because in the patron versions of Asorial's Resolve, you're going to need to manipulate your formation a lot. Uh, and I found in Strahd's version, the best phase place for the tanks was in the back. Uh, and that kind of freaked out my viewers when I did that on stream. Uh, <laughs> but that's the reality. Uh, so we're going to have Nyeli in the front. Uh, we have Hitch. Uh, he's going to be right behind Nyeli, and he's going to be in this top column. Because in Tomb of Annihilation, uh, there is a, a top shelf blessing. Uh, it gives you 2,000% more damage if they're in the topmost slot. That's the one we care about. There is also a fallback, which gives you 1,000% if you're in the rearmost column, but we lose way too much uh, if we go all the way back there. So we're just going to go for the top shelf. Uh, we're going to put uh, Calliope here in the middle. And unlike most runs, we're not going to run College of Valor. We're going to run College of Lore. Our damage, because we're hitting, we're going to hit the soft cap before we hit 400, is going to be fine. What we need is survivability. And survivability is provided by College of Lore. It does not raise the amount of her shields. What it does is it allows you to ca her to cast her shield more often. So normally she casts her shield once every 15 seconds if a party member's been damaged. But this brings it down to once every 10 seconds. So instead of uh, four times a minute... Uh, at once every 15 seconds. Um, we're getting it six times a minute. Um, this is going to help out quite a bit. So, College of Lore. And, you know, again, we're going to shoot for, for our soft cap. Do we have the gold for it yet? Nope, not yet. All right. Uh, one thing that'll help us to get the gold is I start off with Jarlaxle in my run usually, and it's going to help me to level him up. So we do Piracy and gold. He's going to come out later. 
uh, when we get to when we get to the final boss, he's going to come out, but he's going to help us. He's going to help you on your journey to 400 to help max out everyone and get them to their soft cap. Next up, uh, we have Esmeralda. Esmeralda is a recent addition. Um, if you don't have her, it's totally fine. Uh, you can slot Brunor in this same spot, uh, and Brunor will buff, uh, and and you'll be fine. Uh, but Esmeralda uh, is a newer champion who is a very niche champion. She specifically hates. Well, you can you can change her hatred and her effectiveness to to a variety of things with her first specialization. But by default, she hates undead. Uh, guess what, folks? Valindra's undead. Uh, so we're going to keep her in her undead spec. The other bonus that she gets um, is whenever you, whenever somebody in her column uh, attacks an armored or segmented health champion, or enemy, excuse me, uh, or just be like a barrier of some kind, uh, instead of taking off one chunk she takes off, you'll take off two. So you get double the pleasure from... Uh, <laughs> From her. Uh, let's see, where is that? That is going to be under. Uh, come on, it's under training montage. Uh, prepare. So, Esmeralda marks every enemy she attacks with this debuff. If the enemy has armor or hits based health, champions in Esmeralda's column remove an extra chunk when dealing damage to them. Um, so, that's going to help us quite a bit with Valindra because, again, Valindra is uh, an armored boss. Um, and it's, you know, as we get further down into her respawns, she's going to, it's going to be harder to remove those. So if we can get double credit every time we remove something, that's fantastic. Um, and Hitch, there's a nice synergy with Hitch here because Hitch attacks multiple times. So he, he throws a number of daggers and then stabs the nearest target in the face, right? The nearest target's going to be Valindra. Um, so depending on how on what feats you have. I mean, when he levels up, he's going to be throwing multiple daggers, but he also have, has feats for extra attacks. I have one slotted here. Uh, he also can bounce his daggers. So every time he either her, his dagger hits her and bounces and hits her again, which can bounce up to five times, um, RNG based, and then he gets that attack, All of if all of those are able to take off an armored chunk off Falindra, they take off two because of Esmeralda. So there's a fantastic synergy here that can burn Belinda down very quickly for you. Um, again, because again, we should have more than enough damage just based off soft capping um, because you should be going to the, into this with at least E18 favor, right? We'll talk about some of these uh, things a little more in depth if you're confused uh, in a little later. Uh, and you can be sure to ask questions. We'll address all the questions in the second half of the show. Um, Okay, so uh, the other person that I really like, and again, you don't you don't have to use Dinar, but I think Dinar and Calliope are kind of the key to this. Because again, Dinar can heal uh, anywhere in the party. And we're going to see his heals uh, pop off here. Uh, I'll go into that in a moment. See how we're getting some green numbers all over the place? That's Dinar throwing his little uh, heal over time on people. So as they're... As she punt, as Valinda punches through some shields, he's going to top everybody off, uh, and Calliope's just going to reapply those shields. As you can see, the shields are up on everyone except for Dragonbait because Dragonbait's an NPC and he doesn't get them. Um, so this is kind of the the best combination. We're going to throw him up here because what he does is he buffs everyone in his column and behind him. So we want to keep Dinar in the front. In this specific situation, Dinar is not a tank, but again. We don't need traditional tanks against Valindra. We need a couple of them for their health, but we don't need them in the front specifically. So uh, I like Dinar for this. I like it a lot because he provides that buff. He can provide that heal. He just kind of gives you what you want uh, because here's the downside. Celeste uh, only heals in the columns in front of her. So even if you were to put her all the way in the back, which is doable, and use her life spec. She's going to heal these first two columns, but everyone in the back row is just going to be left to themselves and ultimately die to Valindra. Um, that's a problem, right? Uh, Korth provides uh, some shields, but no heals. Regis does a heal, but it's on attacks, and sometimes it works against bosses like Valindra, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, you can take your chances with it, uh, but those are all, again, these are... 
like Regis is an event champion, just like Dinar is. So I think if you're going to ha- if you find that you run Dragon Bait without Dinar uh, and you're not able to complete uh, Sorrel's Resolve uh, and you're going to go hunting for an event champion to make that work. Dragon uh, Dinar is basically the event champion one. Uh, I pick Oya oh yeah because uh, it kind of gives the maximum buff. And again, we're we're just going to be dealing with one enemy and not a bunch. Uh, the other everyone cool out is an AOE type thing, so not worried about that really. So we'll go ahead and we'll see. Are we at soft cap yet? Not yet. Okay. Uh, I've got Minsk in here for the moment. Uh, we're going to throw him on again undead because Valendra is undead. So we're setting everything up for the final boss fight. That's how we're making our decisions. We're not worried about all the garbage mobs that we're going to run into before that. We only care about setting up all of our specs uh, and our formation for that final boss fight. Uh, Mako's Stark Blessing, that's his buff. That's what we want. We get that maxed out. And then we're going to play around with this formation a little bit, or we'll at least look and see if we need to. Um, So we've got... Uh, the buffers that need to be in front up here. We've got Calliope. She's in the middle because she applies her shield automatically to everyone within two spaces of her. So that's going to hit everyone in this formation, all the actual champions. Uh, if if Dragon Bait, if NPC Dragon Bait could get a shield, he would be within range too, but he, he can't. Uh, Esmeralda needs to be in the same column as Hitch uh, for that double armor chunkage, and that's kind of the big deal that we're going for with her. Hitch is in the top row. Uh, Makos just doesn't want to be near the person he's buffing, so he's in the corner. Uh, Minsk and Jarlaxle don't care. And honestly, Tyrell's only here uh, for his health. That's it. That's that's all he's here for, folks. He's here to provide health. I don't need anything else from him. I just need that massive chunk of Canadian moose health. <laughs> Uh, or bear health if that's if you've got their original barrel. Uh, we're gonna prep. Um, normally you would have like Archon left over, and Archon would be fine uh, if you wanted another tank. Um, you could do this with uh, Tyrell in his Moonbeam form, and Archon in like his bulk up form. Um, I just say uh, go with go with Tyrell in his Wild Shape, uh, and Nyeli in her Devotion, and you should be fine. Uh, now, we're going to prep uh, Ashara. Now, we're going to be, again, our DPS is going to be Hitch, and Hitch is a human rogue, so we want to prep Ashara for humans, uh, because Ashara is going to go in in this for Jarlaxle. Uh, now, again, uh, do I care too much about these? I don't think so. I'm just going to pick exotic races. Uh, if you have Crawl, uh, and I think I say this on just about every stream I do about idle champions. Uh, if you don't have crawl, go get crawl. Uh, if you can manual time gate and get crawl, go get crawl, folks. Um, if you have crawl, he makes he's going to make this so much easier. Uh, and we'll talk about why that is. And we may do Valindra a couple times, like with with and without crawl, so you can see the difference crawl makes. Um, but this should be t- totally doable. Uh, in this formation, uh, I, with this type of formation. Ashara is going to go right here where Jarlaxle is. I'll throw her in just so you can see. Um, she doesn't have any requirements for placement. So this is basically the formation that we're going to use. Uh, we should just be able to cruise through this uh, with them in their places. So uh, ultimately, that's kind of the, the build we're going for. We're going for damage where we can get it and lots of survivability. Uh, because, again, uh, the, just soft capping our champions at the current soft cap uh, should provide us enough damage if we're, if we're placing people correctly in a formation to beat Valindra. What we have to worry about is do we have enough survivability? So this is one of those rare situations where you need both damage and survivability. Uh, you can't just overpower Valindra because segmented health. Uh, and she's going to wipe you out. And if everybody dies, you know, you, you, you can only click off a segmented health piece once every six seconds. So you don't want to be sitting there trying to just click your way through Belindra with just your tanks left alive. You might be able to do it, but it's going to take a real long time. Real long time. 
Uh, mediocre Bard, I'll get to your question. Uh, when we get to the question, Q, Q&A portion. You don't have to ask multiple times. Uh, Jay is in chat. He's pulling all your questions uh, so that we have them. I have them in a big list over here. I see them all with all your names. Uh, and I will get to them when I can. Uh, so... We're on cruise control to get there. Um, we have slowed down a bit. That's because some of my speed potions wore off. So let's throw on a little more speed oh, up down here. Uh, and we're going to throw back into our party uh, a couple speed champions. Uh, just for the time being. We'll pull them out when we get there. Uh, but we want to uh, move through this as quickly as possible. Okay, so I'm going to level up uh, some Dragon Bait. Let's talk about Dragon Bait a bit, because that's what this is about, right? Dragon Bait is a tank uh, slash support character. Um, he's lawful good because he's a paladin. That doesn't necessarily mean you have to be lawful good, but he just is. Uh, he has an overwhelm of 25, which is pretty solid. Uh, you know, overwhelm is uh, what determines, uh, like, you take normal damage for anything under 25. Once he gets over 25... Uh, enemies attacking him. He starts taking additional damage, so he is overwhelmed. Um, he does have a feat down here to make, to raise that to 35. Uh, so he's a pretty tanky boy. He's got some health feats. Uh, you know, he's got a double dash of health feats, which uh, I tend to run his health uh, and his shin state, and we'll talk about shin state in a minute. Um, but yeah, he's got pretty good feat support. Uh, he's got pretty good item support. If we look through here, he's got all damage. Uh, all champs damage. He's got a health item, and that's the big thing you want in a, in a tanking champion. Make sure that they have some way to scale up their health. Uh, he's got a scent roasted vegetable, so this is going to be one of his buffs we'll talk about. Uh, scent meat sauce. Uh, Dragon Bait uh, communicates, if you don't know, Dragon Bait communicates via scents. That's why we, <laughs> the code for today is smells like lemons. Uh, when he communicates, when, when he smells like lemons, that's him saying, uh, communicating that he is feeling pleasure or joy. Uh, so this is a joyful day, so he smells like lemons. Um, he gets his ultimate attack damage and his ultimate attack cooldown uh, in terms of that. And one moment. Okay. So, uh, Dragon Bait's upgrades. Uh, he starts off with Fast Friends. Fast Friends is his health share. Um, he gets that right away, so his doesn't isn't based off spec. Uh, and he just, he's, he's automatically helping you the moment you put him in, which is good because he's a slot 11 champion. So it takes a lot to, of, of gold to get him in the game. Shen State, uh, he increases the damage of champions within one slot, uh, by, uh, a certain amount, right? And this is going to be changed by your upgrades and your items and your feats, right? Um, now we may feel like, well, one slot, that's, that's not a whole lot, right? But this number is going to change based off some other uh, abilities later on. And that's one of the nice uses of Dragon Bait is you can build formations around him and he adjusts based off the formation. Uh, Scent Pie Crust, the range of Shin State is increased by one for each healer uh, champion in the formation stacking additively. So this is what increases this. So right now we have two healers in our formation. We have Dinar and Calliope. So if I were to put him in, he would he would his Shin State would go up to three, which means he would buff in the right spot, he would buff basically everybody in the formation. So you can adjust him, but he will adjust his range based off that. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. Uh, and that's part of pie crust, specifically for healers. Roasted vegetables uh, increases the effect of Shin State for each enemy attacking Dragon Bait and for each enemy in Rage Stack. Um, now this is important. So this is his tanking ramp, like ramping tanking buff. Uh, a lot of tanks have this. The good tanks have this. Because this means the more people that are piling up, the more damage your team's going to be able to do. Um, and also, as, as a boss enrages, uh, it's going to ramp that up uh, like one enemy per enrage stack. The interesting part about the enrage is the enrage effect can work when Dragon Bait's anywhere in the formation. Or it should. <laughs> this effect is increased by 100% for each other tanking champion in the formation. So Dragon Bait loves it if you're in a multi-tank formation. In this formation that we have right now, where if, if this were a real formation and this was the real Dragon Bait, this is not necessarily the ideal use of Dragon Bait. You want him in a, ideally in those three tank formations, like those three tank front lines, 
um, along with two other tanks. Uh, that's going to give him the maximum happiness and joy. Uh, scent meat sauce. Uh, so this is another one of his scents. Increases the effect of Shen state for each support champion in the formation. So see, he, he likes healers, he likes tanks, and he likes support champions. So all of these things are going to uh, increase his abilities. So if you have tanking support champions, like they're like we have uh, uh, out on the field right now, and like he is, uh, that's going to give him a bonus in two ways, right? Um, and if you have healing support, which I believe all currently all the healings are also tag support, uh, that's going to affect him two ways as well. Uh, his ultimate is Holy Avenger. We should talk about this. This helps out with uh, Valindra as well. Uh, it's super tiny down here. So let's uh, let's actually throw him in up here for uh, Nihili. Uh Holy Avenger is right here. Dragon Bait jumps out and strikes with his Holy Avenger, dealing damage to all enemies on screen and immediately clearing any stun charm effects on champions. This is our only on-demand stun charm clear in the game. So if you're finding yourself against champions that have that, or against enemies that have that, like a boss fight, Dragon Bait comes in super handy. Again, this is his niche. This is where he lives and thrives. Uh, any fiends or undead left alive after using the ultimate are marked with an overlay of the Holy Avenger. Champions who attack marked enemies deal 400% additional damage. So that's a five times damage boost on anything left alive. Well, guess what, folks? Valindra is going to be alive for a very long time. So we're going to want to get this out on... If, you're, if, if we were using him against Valindra, which you can do in the patron versions, you would want to mark Valindra with this. But it also works against any other undead or fiend, right? And there's lots of undead. Well, you're kind of done with uh, Tomb of Annihilation when you're done here, but there's lots of fiends in Descent into Avernus. So uh, Dragon Bait can come in super handy. Uh, let's put Nally back in so we're not confusing people with two Dragon Baits. All right. Oh, and now his spec choice. So this is where he gets super fiddly. Uh, people have lots of questions about this. So you have, two, you have two specializations. One is called Scent Roasted Chicken. The other is Herbs and Spices. Not going to lie, by default, I tend to just pick herbs and spices. Uh, what this does is inf increases his uh, roasted vegetables ability by 50%. So if we go back and we look, roasted vegetables is his ramping buff based off how many enemies are attacking him. So that's great. That basically makes him, that makes his ramping buff even better. And it's the one that gets boosted by other tank champions. So again, if we're using him effectively, if we're using him as a tank, or I shouldn't say effectively, optimally, if we're using him as a tank in the front line with multiple other tanks in your formation, uh, roasted vegetables is just like choosing the spec uh, herbs and spices is just going to make him even more effective. The one that you have to watch for is roasted chicken. Um, this changes his multipliers uh, for support for his meat sauce uh, thing based off how many slots they are away. This one's super fiddly. Uh, and the way you have to figure this out, oh, it's not, I can't do it while he's in the game. Well, that's fine. Uh, we're about to get through Valindra here. Okay, she's dead. Uh, we'll let this continue to AFK forward. And we're going to go over here. So on Reddit, uh, if someone types in, oh, here, I could do it. Uh, that link will take you to this page. And on this page, uh, I, if you scroll down, you'll find guides to obtaining evergreen champions. Uh, Dragon Baits is right down here. He is uh, the fourth evergreen added to the game. Uh, so if we go to his guide, it's going to have all of the information about his abilities. And the one we're uh, talking about with this specialization is Meat Sauce. So initially, uh, one slot away, uh, this is, again, this is increasing Shen state for the, the support champions in the formation, but it's also based off how far away they are from him. The ideal distance with the base version of Meat Sauce is two slots away. Uh, if you change his specialization, if you change it to Roasted Chicken, the ideal situation is five slots away. So this is a this specialization of scent roasted chicken is very dependent upon where, like the type of of formation layout there is. Like, would you have like dragon bait would want to be all the way in the front, and you would have to have a big row of support champions five slots away uh, in the back. 
that is a very rare situation that you would find Dragon Bait in. Um, so this tends to be a very rare spec choice, but this is what you're talking about. This is what you have to look at when you're trying to figure that out. How many slots away? Uh, you know, if you can get them four away, you're you're in parity with the two away that comes here, and that's usually what you're seeing, uh, but not always. Uh, but keep this in mind. This is these are higher values. So if all of your if all of your uh, supports are one slot away, you would choose roasted chicken because that's just a base higher value than this, right? So there's there's a weird situation. You want them either super far away or all up close. Uh, and again, you don't have to use Dragon Bait as a tank. He is a support. He can be in the back, but he is optimal as an actual tank. So keep that in mind. Uh, so yes, so his specialization choices, you know, most of the time you'll probably find yourself defaulting to herbs and spices. Um, but not always. You just have to keep that in mind. Uh, he ends up getting a decent amount of health. Let's see. Okay, we're at soft cap, folks. So I will show you what his soft cap health is compared to some of the others. Now keep in mind, uh, items are going to make this different. Uh, I do have uh, different levels of items on all the champions. Uh, and because we're using uh, core and evergreen champions, they're going to be pretty high. So like Nihilate's health buff is 1,000%, whereas Dragon Baits is only 788 Dragon Bait comes in at uh, 338 EO5, base health. I'm going to have to pull these out so they're not getting a health share. Uh, Nayeli's 507 EO5. So coming in pretty close to Nayeli. Uh, but again, Nayeli's buffed up a bit more by items, as is uh, Tyrell. Where's his health one? Oh, is it slot one? His is Tyrell's, and my Tyrell is really high. Uh, so 5 EO5. So he comes in pretty comparatively if you have... Uh, Comparative items. He's not falling off too hard. Um, I, he is the last champion I have. Just trivia. Uh, he's the, he is the last missing guild for me. All my corn evergreen are gilded with either shinies or golden. And I'm still waiting on his. Mm, one day. One day. Okay, so we are at soft cap. So now I'm going to talk about soft cap. Uh, as you can see, all of my champions now have a little circle with a line through it. That means... Uh, no more, no more stuff. Uh, there's nothing here to click, right? I'm on upgrade. There's nothing here to click. So I don't have, I don't get a bonus every time I level them up that says 100%. Um, what I can do to go past that is I can switch over to, you know, an X of anything higher. And I can click through here. And I can take them above. This is how you get those feet slots that are higher than this soft cap. Uh, the thing is, is all this does is raise the damage uh, by like 1%. So you, you can add some percentage damage uh, to raise your, your DPS, but it doesn't add like raise, raising damage on all everyone else. Doesn't really matter. Um, oh, we're coming up on Valindra. Let me hold on and swap back in to the people that we were going to do this with. Oh, still got it. I'm like, why is that taking so long? <laughs> okay. So basically this takes them to the last point where they're getting a major upgrade. Uh, point of order though for Valindra because we're talking about survivability uh, along with raising 1% hell or 1% damage uh, one thing it does is it always get it also gives you a little boost like a little bit of a heal when you level up that obviously matters when you're fighting Valindra because she's nuking your entire party um, so if you see people that are falling a little behind from healing you can, and this works if you don't have Dinar and you're using Celeste, you can start manually healing the people that are in the back row by just leveling them up. Just by spamming, just putting on an X1 and spamming some levels on them. It will heal them up and keep them alive while you're fighting Valindra. In an ideal situation, you don't have to gimmick it out that way. But it is possible for you to do. It's something you really only want to do if you're... Uh, if you're in a situation in a variant where you just can't, you just need one that you need to beat that boss to finish the variant and you'll be done. Throw some heals out, right? Throw some of those heals out. But when you're at soft cap, this is the last, this is the last of the upgrades that a champion has. There's no more past 990 for Nihili currently. Um, that's it. You're done. You're soft capped. This is what we want. This is the maximum power that gold can get you. Uh, and that means that favor can get you because you're already going to be maxed out in your blessings. Uh, so all this extra gold find I have, like E30%, it doesn't matter. Because the goal here was just to get to soft cap. So I can't 
gold doesn't make me any 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 more uh, any stronger here. I um, mean, again, I can't over level my DPS, but we're not going to do that. Uh, all right, let's move forward. So again, we're going to try to just kind of move through this. Um, oh, 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 let's get Esmeralda back out there. We're going to move through this kind of with this. Uh, there we go. With this formation. Um, again, I have super high item levels, so we're probably just going to smoke Valindra. But uh, I used this formation except with Crawl. Uh, and I think I had Avern in. So I, I had a couple of the newer champions from the recent event um, to help me get past Valindra. Uh, but we killed Valindra just with auto attacks. I didn't even have to use ultimates, uh, which is a big deal. Normally you're, you're working ultimates in a very specific order to take Valindra out and potentially nuking her with Krull at the end. And we'll talk about that because we're going to do this a couple times. Um, but... Uh, with, with the power levels that I have, uh, we should just be able to just auto attack right through her. We'll see. Who knows? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Um, so, uh, again, we have extra levers we can pull in terms of survivability and damage at this point because we have, uh, we have potions, uh, and we have, uh, well, we're going to put a fire breath one out. Let's throw that out right now. Um, because we want all of these things dying to, uh, the familiars. So boom, we're on Valindra. Uh, as you can see, uh, she has eight respawns left this encounter. It's at the bottom of this tooltip. Now seven. We've already gone through one. You can watch her. Look at how fast those are melting away. Every time Hitch throws out his daggers, he's deleting, uh, like two thirds of her health bar, uh, because of Esmeralda. Because he has multiple attacks with his daggers, and he's got Elsmeralda in his corner, and she's giving him double credit. Uh, so there we can see the NPC Dragonbite has died already. Went down after after four respawns left. And now we're down to two. And you can see we're, we're not really... We're taking some damage, because you can see uh, Dinar's heals are popping off green over a couple people. But Calliope's shields are keeping everybody... Uh, basically alive and protecting their full health bars. Uh, it looks like Dinar might have got a stun off there. Now he's stunned. <laughs> he's got those big eyes on him, and she's dead. Right, so uh, we're going to continue. Uh, so basically, when you use a multi-hit champion like Hitch, Hitch is kind of ideal for this in this situation, uh, with someone like Esmeralda, who gives you extra credit for all of those hits, uh, Valindra becomes a walk in the park. Uh, we're going to switch this up and we'll pull out, uh, we're going to pull out like Dinar. I, I don't know that it's going to matter, but I'll show you what it looks like. Uh, if you try to fiddle it with Celeste, you're going to want to use her in life domain. Let's get her maxed out. Uh, in this situation, you'll, you'll then put, you can put, uh, Tyrell up front again. Uh, well, she could stay there if she wants. That's that's totally fine. She's going to be healing. As you can see, these big heals coming out. Uh, she's healing uh, huge chunks for people now. Um, normally, it would be this 7,000 on both. But I have a perk that you won't have. Uh, Mert's perk up, which increases the healing received by tank champions by 50%. Um, but basically, she's going to heal up here. The protection you're getting for your back column is fully coming from shields only, and that includes Celeste. So you have to be aware of that. And you may, in this situation, may have to use the gimmicky uh, plus one if you don't have Dinar. All right, so we'll do this again. What you don't really want to do is swap out Calliope for Keelik or Briv. Uh, again, because the whole reason Calliope is going to exist in your formation is to give you health above your maximum. Uh, Keelik and Briv are only going to be able to heal you up after you've been hurt. And if, if Valindra's throwing down above your max health, they can't help you. They can't help you at all. Um, again, another thing you could do if you're running into health issues is pop a bunch of your, uh, the blue potions of heroism. But again, I don't think we're going to have that issue here. I think Calliope's shields should keep us alive through this. We already beat her, so I'm not getting... The, because I came back, I'm not getting my respawn counter. Uh, but we'll see if we lose anybody in the back line. 
Uh, I'm not sure if we will. Uh, and so this multi-hit strategy works with any multi-hit champion. So I, I use Hitch because, again, I just started a new player account, and Hitch is my DPS there. Uh, he's an evergreen. He gets gear out of regular chests, so he ends up being my best DPS right now. Um, and the fact that he's multi-hit makes him ideal for... Ooh, we are, we are losing. We're losing out. Uh, it makes him ideal for this type of situation. Okay, we, we beat her. So right at the end there, we did take a huge some huge chunks of damage. We were still able to beat her, though. Again, this is largely... This is going to be a lot harder for, for most people, but this is largely on the back of the health share that I have coming out of outrageous items here. So you would have to pop potions, and you would try to burn her down with ultimates, right? Uh, but the key is just making sure you have a fire breath potion on to kill off all the trash, so that when you pop all of these, they're only hitting Valindra. Right, you want everything hitting Valindra. Uh, let's go back, and we're gonna do one with. Uh, I'm gonna put Dinar back in because I just prefer Dinar. Uh, but we're gonna do one with Crawl, and we're gonna talk about Crawl. So in this situation, you're gonna want pain. You want to focus on pain, uh, because again, the only enemy on the screen is gonna be Valindra, and we just want to do maximum damage to Valindra. So what, what Crawl's going to offer here is a debuff that's going to make it so that more than just Hitch are going to be able to take off chunks of armor on Valindra, potentially. Uh, it's also going to make it easier for you to uh, to do damage Valindra. Like, you know, if, if you're having a hard time uh, damaging her with Hitch, once Crawl gets some pain stacks on her, uh, she's going to take all the damages. Uh, and because enemies spawn in with a plague on them, it's also going to make it so that Valindra, and this may be the first time you've ever seen it, is going to hit 30 or 40 pain stacks, which is just outrageous amounts of damage. So we're going to head up to that. Okay, so we're already seeing some plagues build up on her. They're not pain. There's pain. You can see it right behind. There's a little number here. So he's going 6, 8, 9, 10... Uh, it's going to start going past that as soon as we get a spread off uh, one of the other enemies. We're probably, she's because we have so much DPS, she's probably going to die in like... Esmeralda actually kills her so fast she may not get even 20. Uh, that's kind of the power of a, a decently geared Esmeralda combined with Hitch. Yep, now she's up to 20. And she's going to die here real soon. But as you can see, you're going to get multiple instances of of the plagues. That's from virulent strain, and that's from all of these enemies dying quickly as they spawn in. Yep, there she went. Uh, we're going to do this one more time, and I'm going to show you how to nuke her with crawl. This is the big reason you want crawl, and Dinar can kind of do this. Dinar's ultimate, if we show it here real quick, uh, it missed. But if it lands on her, uh, it's just going to chew through her, her armored... Uh, health. Uh, so Crawls is gonna hit because she's the only target. And what we do with Crawls is you count down until she's got... I like to make sure that this shows three respawns left. Um, there are some people that, that say to do it on four. Uh, but if you pop off Crawls ultimate, she's just gonna be in pools of that goo. And as you can see, it just deletes all of her health. And she's gone. That's another way that Crawl makes this a super easy fight for you. So if you have Crawl, use him. Uh, if he gets down, once once Valindra is at four, like three or four respawns, I, again, I, I say three just to make sure that you get her all the way done. Uh, pop that off. You should be fine in terms of health. Like you sh she shouldn't be doing enough damage where she's nuking your entire team. Uh, and even as that starts chewing through her health, if she starts wiping out your team, you're still going to be fine. You can pop off all the rest of your ultimates. Uh, because your tanks will stay alive through all of her bombardment, even if your DPS die. That's Dragon Bait, folks. That's Asorial's Resolve. Uh, it's challenging in the sense that you need to know how to build out a good uh, formation for her uh, to take her out. But, you know, you can do it without lots of having lots of like the super overpowered champions like we can do this with Brunor here. Instead of, you'll see it slows down a little bit. 
Uh, if we swap Brunor and we swap back to Ashara, so you're more of a more in the new player. Uh, and let's let's bring Celeste in again. So this is more like completely new player account, right? Uh, you can still do it this way. It's just going to be a lot more challenging. You'll want to save uh, your Flame Strike ultimate on Celeste uh, for when she gets down, and you'll get one shot of of fully healing everyone, and then you're going to have to spam single heals on whoever's in your back row that's dying. That's really what it's going to come down to because these front two rows should be okay, but you'll need to spam for the back row and potentially for Hitch, right? To keep him alive. Um, but even with this, we should be able to get through all this because again, uh, she's going to die a little slower. Specifically, uh, she'll die half as fast, right? Because she's getting double credit from Esmeralda. Uh, but you'll, you'll have plenty of damage. You just then need the survivability. All right, I think now uh, we're going to let this finish off and then we will take a quick pause for maybe 15, 20 seconds uh, while I sip some water and then we will do the Q&A. Uh, but let's see if we can actually make it through this. I'm getting ready to... Uh, one thing you can do is you can, you can place familiars if you have them down here on these champions to level them up at X1 to just auto heal. I'm trying to see if she's at the point where we're going to need that yet. I think she is. So I'm going to throw one on Celeste, one on Minsk, one on Ashara, one on Makos. And so see, they're getting constant heals in the back. You don't see the green over them, but their health bar glows every time they go up. Uh, and then we can like we can start popping off our ultimates. Try to stun her. She's stunning us, by the way. This is why these gray out. She will stun you. So we'll stun her back or attempt to, right? So we can use our ultimates, but we want to save that flame strike for if we get in trouble uh, damage-wise. Like, ooh, that just chunked out Hitch. So we want to, I'm going to top him off, and then I'm going to throw one of these on him too. Uh, I don't have to put them on my tanks. My tanks are, their health's going to be fine. Not worried about them at all. And she's gone, right? So this is doable. You know, it's going to be a lot harder if you don't have Dinar uh, specifically. But I think as long as you have Dinar, uh, you can have a full group of core champions and be fine. Uh, but anyone, uh, anyone else above that uh, is just going to make it quicker and easier for you. Crawl, obviously, the, the big deal. Uh, but Dinar is the first go-to. Krull would be second. Uh, again, you should have already had him. So, you know, uh, you can do a lot with Krull, and it's going to be a lot easier with Krull. You can probably just use Krull without Dinar and have all core champions in there with Hitch and Krull and be totally fine. Uh, just, again, make sure you have at least a 18 favor uh, and that you soft cap. So maybe pop those gold find potions right away, like them pop an epic right away so that you, or farm once you get to, like, 399. Just make sure you're soft capped down here with the circle and line through it before you start the Valindra fight. And you should have more than enough power to get through all of that. So we're going to take a quick break, everyone, and I'll be right back. Hello, Anna Beck. All right. Uh, this is a Q&A portion. Uh, we're going to dive right into it. Uh, I saw one right away here. I'm just going to answer this real quick, and I think uh, Jay already answered it. Uh, Daragade. Dang, I missed the stream. Is this going to be on YouTube later? Yes, uh, it will be on YouTube, but next week. So, like, you know, today's Saturday. 
So Monday or Tuesday, it'll probably be loaded up on the CNA Games YouTube channel. Until then, you can watch it on this channel after this stream ends, or even right now, if you want to, if you want to skip the Q&A. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> you could go just to the Videos tab and replay it. Uh, okay. So, um, I guess we can just... Let me just let this keep going. Um, so I'm going to head into the questions. I'm going to try to find ones that are specifically about what we've been doing right away. Um, and then I will try to hit up everything that has to do with anything else in the game afterwards. So let me let me pull up uh, my list. Um, so does the N... So the question is, does he have, does he have tags... An NPC like Tank or Good Evil. I think they're talking about the NPC Dragon Bait. Um, as far as I know, it's just an NPC like any other NPC in a formation, and it doesn't provide your team with any kind of bonuses, and you can't provide it with any. Uh, CNE would have to inform us otherwise. The only thing that he is providing your group comes from this up here, uh, which you can see at the end is quite a bit, but again, he dies in that last fight, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, how many hits does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll? No, that's not the... How many hits does it take to break segmented armor chunks? Sorry, Num Nums, I had to. Uh, I love that commercial. Um, one hit per chunk, but only if it's an ar if it's armored health, it's, it's one hit per segment, but only if you meet the damage threshold for that segment. So what is the damage threshold? The damage threshold is the total amount of health that enemy has divided by the number of segments that it starts with. So Valindra, uh, well, her health goes up every time, right? Every time she respawns, but she starts out at a base amount of health, let's say uh, 100. This is That's way too low, but we're going to say she starts at 100 health. She has 50 segmented uh, chunks, and you can tell it's 50 because it's 25 if, if her health is just red. It's 50 if it starts out as yellow. So you get through the yellow and then you go into the red. Um, there are some situations where Lolth provides a bonus and that's purple health beforehand, but generally speaking, you're going to see yellow uh, or red segmented health. Um, so you would divide 100 by 50 and you find out, well, you need at least two damage per segment, right? Obviously, we deal with uh, a lot higher numbers than 100, So, but that's how you figure out. Uh, how much you're going to need. So let's say she has 1E20 health, right? So this is going to be a little scientific notation explanation as well as uh, segmented health. But if if she has 50 chunks, we're taking, this is just the quick math, we're taking one zero off of her E amount. So instead of 1E20, we bring it down to 1E19 because those are the numbers of zeros that are, are at the end of the one. Uh, when you move the when you move the decimal over, uh, and then we divide that number by five, so then we end up at what two e o eighteen, right? No, yeah, yeah, two e eighteen. So basically, you end up uh, you know dropping down a little bit, and that's how you figure it out. If you're using regular math notations, then you can just do the regular math, but you know you're dividing by fifty, right? Um, or you're dividing by twenty five if it's, if it's all in red. Uh, now, there are uh, just hits-based barricades and barriers, and when you hover over them, they're going to straight up tell you how much health there is, and each, it'll say, like, if it's red and there's, if it's, it's segmented and it's red, and then you hover over it and it'll say 25 health, that means each segment has one health, so any amount of damage works. Um, there are bosses, there are major bosses that are like that, um, that just need you to do at least one one damage every time you hit them. Uh, Valindra's not that, though. Uh, what is soft capping splotch the great? We went into that um, again. That's the that's the point where you are. Uh, there are no more upgrades left uh, for you to get to. Uh, there is no hard cap. It's just a soft cap because you can go above it by punching more, and you'll get a little more damage. But you don't get any of the actual decent upgrades that are what really power the growth of your champions. Uh. And yeah, I did, I did this without a core. I think we had already talked about that, but I removed my core. I wanted to simulate, you know, as best I could on this account, a new player challenge, uh, you know, what you're going to be as a newer player. But, you know, core is just going to help you out. Perks are just going to help you out. You know, blessings from other campaigns are going to help you out. But I did it on my new player account 
with just the tier one global from Sword Coast and then all of the Tumana Annihilation stuff. Uh, no patrons, no core, nothing. Uh, and we we auto attacked right through it just like I did here. So Dragon Bait, uh, once upon a time, was incredibly difficult and it, it still is if you don't know how to build your formation, but now you should know how to build that formation and it should just be a walk in the park for you. Um, how is it that you're getting hitched to DPS over Jarlaxle? Um, because he's better than Jarlaxle. So when you when you first start out as a new player, and and it may be for like, depending on how on how quickly you're progressing, it may be a month or two. Jarlaxle is going to do the most burst damage for you. But Jarlaxle only attacks the enemies furthest away from your group. So as you get close to your wall and enemies start building up on your tank, he doesn't help your tank out at all. Uh, you have to rely on ultimates to clear out the wave that's right on your tank to get survivability to move forward. So there becomes a certain point where you have enough favor where Hitch uh, is going to do roughly close to the same amount of damage, but is going to be a better, and then eventually will do better damage, but it's going to be a better DPS for you to use because he's going to be able to clear that wave off your tank, allowing your tank to survive long enough for you to kill everything and move forward. Um, yeah. And then again, it depends on what, on your spec and your gear and like, there's lots of variations, but Hitch, despite being tagged as a support champion is a fantastic early game DPS. I use him a lot in the late game. You just saw me use him here. Uh, I use him and other multi-hit champions all the time because if I'm dealing, if I'm if I'm going up against armored enemies, uh, why would I punish myself and make myself wait to get through them all, right? When I could just slot Hitch uh, or Binwin uh, and Esmeralda and then just chew through all the things, right? I'm going to go back to my preferred formation here. Yeah. So yeah, Hitch is, Hitch is great. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Uh, let's see. Calliope can go into the back slots. Two to three, her range allows for that, and Hitch gets a buff. Yeah. Yeah. So you could put... Uh, if, you're, if you're running out of damage, we weren't. Uh, one way to fiddle with this is to move her right there. Okay, if you put her, right, actually, we would want to do this. If you're running into damage issues, you put Calliope in the back. Calliope buffs the column in front of her. We didn't have that issue, so I went just for, I went for putting her in the middle, uh, just to show everybody you want to keep her kind of, make sure that she is getting her shield to everybody. But you can't do it here or here, right? Like either of these places, she's going to, she's going to both buff this column and keep shields on everyone. We didn't run into any damage issues, so it wasn't an, it wasn't a problem. Uh, but if you could do this, and she's going to, Valinder's going to die even quicker because uh, Ashara is also throwing out multiple hits and is in the same column as Esmeralda. That works. That works. The key here is not everybody, what I was trying to, to explain is, and maybe this got missed, uh, everyone doesn't necessarily have to be in the most optimal position uh, when fighting Valindra. As long as you have enough damage, you can adjust your formation to be suboptimal damage wise, as long as it's optimal uh, in survivability. So that's why we have, we have Tyrrell all the way in the back, right? Like that's not a thing. Tyrrell doesn't go in the back, but Valindra is a, is a non-normal fight and you, you need to open your mind to non-normal perspectives uh, to beat it. But yeah, if you just want to maximize your damage, which again, wasn't an issue for us, you put, you put Clyde in the back. Uh, is Hitch worth it when using Averin because he lacks the DPS tag? I mean, it's, it's fine. It's suboptimal with Averin, but I, again, I used him with Averin, uh, on my new player account for Valindra because you still get a buff, right? Uh, and again, he's, as long as you have enough damage, you're fine. Hitch is, Hitch is the option when you want to remove, uh, when you want like lots of attacks, he's a multi-attacker. He's going to throw out lots of daggers. Those daggers can bounce. So you can end up with 15 plus, uh, hits, uh, at, at max, like, you know, and then you double that with Valindra. Uh, so yeah, it's just about, it's about doing lots of, lots of chunks in a very quick manner and not necessarily 
optimizing your damage because you should have damage from other places. Uh, see what else we have here specifically about this. If you don't have crawl, why not use a shower for damage? You can't. I, you do whatever you want. <laughs> I, I know I just did a guide on how to beat uh, Valindra, but I think I, I said a couple times, you know, use whatever champions you want to use. Ultimately, I used Hitch because I like Hitch, and I wanted him for uh, for the multi-hit. You really should. If you're, if, you're a, if you're at the point where you're unlocking Dragon Bait, you should have already had a manual time gate, and you should have already used... I'm going to shame you a little bit here. You should have already used that first manual time gate ever to pick up Crawl. Crawl is that overpowered, so Ashara shouldn't enter the conversation after that. <laughs> it's it's rude, uh, but it's honest. I don't like being uh, rude and honest, but it, it, Krull is just so broken, and they've let him stay broken since he came out, really. So if they're going to leave him broken, then go go get him. It doesn't matter that he, he arrives in an event in a couple weeks. If you, ha if you got him in your time gate this weekend, pick him up. If you have a manual time gate you can use right now, Go pick him up. Uh, he's just that. He's that overpowered. Why does the chest coat smells like melons? It's not. It smells like lemons. Ah. Uh, explain that at the beginning. Dragon bait communicates in smells, uh, like in scents. Um, and when he is, when he smells like ham, he's nervous or worried. And when he smells like lemons, he's uh, happy, like he's. His, his emotions are in the pleasure or joy range. Uh, so he is joining our party. Hopefully he will be joining your party soon, and he is excited. So right now he smells like lemons. Uh, would Benwin work with this too? Yeah. Again, any, any uh, multi-hit champion works in that slot. Uh, but Hitch tends to be who you're going to have better gear for. Uh, tends to be, because he's an evergreen champion. So he should he should have good gear and good item levels. Uh, let's see. Which specialization did I choose for Esmeralda? Oh, uh, stay on target and uh, uh, smells like a trap. I believe the one that basically puts the buff on everyone that spawns in. The debuff on everyone. Uh, yeah, smells like a trap. Yeah, I knew we were going to have enough damage. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that it was on everything. No matter what, so otherwise you have to play this RNG game with making sure that it spawns on Valindra, and don't want to have to do that. Uh, so is the max level four hundred, or do they keep on infant? No, the levels in the game go forever. Uh, it's just the completion level for the for Asoriel's Resolve to unlock Dragon Bait is four hundred. Uh, the levels go forever and ever and ever. Uh, you're not gonna get. You're not gonna get much past 400 uh, as it, at, the, at the point where you can unlock Dragon Bait. You're not going to get much past 400, but you know, people are, are I'm at like my highest is like 951 or something, but there are people that are over a thousand. Currently there's a hard cap on levels. I mean, they do go on forever, but they will, they will kind of temporarily ban your account if you, if you hit 1100 because you're not supposed to be there yet. So if you're getting there, it's via some kind of, uh, some kind of method that, there they frown upon. Uh, how to use Dragon Bait after getting him? We went over all that, so yeah, Mella. Uh, hit up, hit up the part where I was explaining Dragon Bait again. Uh, I, I'm not going to go through it all over again, but that was part of the conversation. Maybe you asked that before I did that. Um, but yeah, he is a tank. You ideally want him in a multi-tank front line, so three, three is best. Um, let's see. Do anything else specifically for this? <laughs> Can you show how the fight looks on the new account? Uh, I did uh, last week, or like the week before, not this past Thursday, but the week before. I did it on my new player account. You can check out the highlight if you go to Twitch TV slash Garawar. There's a highlight of me finishing the fight against Valindra uh, on my new player account. Um, with Hitch and Esmeralda. Um, so you can check that under the videos tab. 
Uh, is Dragon Bait from something or did c &E invent him? No, Dragon Bait's been around a very long time. Uh, I want to say Dragon Bait. Mm, some, some, someone better in lore than me can probably fix this, but I think Dragon Bait's been around since like the 80s, 80s or 90s. Um, he was in a book series. Uh, he's been in a video game. Uh, and now he's here. Uh, he was added, a, kind of a, an updated 5e version of him was put in the Tomb of Annihilation campaign guide, which is how he ended up in our game, joining us in Tomb of Annihilation. Uh, Finder series from the 90s. Somebody says 87 or so. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like 80s or 90s, somewhere in there. He's been around a while. Uh... All right. Everything else is general, so I'm going to back up. Uh, we got about 40 minutes, so I should be able to get through everyone's questions. How a blasphemer? How about that Modron layout manager? Woohoo! Yeah. So if uh, if you don't know, now you know. Uh, they added a Modron layout manager under your Modron core, so you can now, bam, clear out all pipes with one press of a button. Load in a saved formation. I should have demonstrated the fact that you want to save it first, but yeah, save your formation first. Then you can clear it. Then you can load it. So you can do all kinds of stuff um, now. And uh, honestly, if I if I go over here, uh, I will show you, probably to my detriment, how confident I am in this. Boom! I just pulled out a fully loaded thing, and now I'm going to load it, load it back in because I saved it yesterday on stream. Boom! Loads it all back in, and then the flow goes. The flow goes. Yeah. So this is something we've wanted for a while. Um, yeah. They finally got. They finally had the time to add this feature. They finally got, you know, a lot of the bugs worked out of this. Not all of them, but a lot of them. And they had time to be able to add this so that people can better build out and test ideas. So now, you know, if you want to mess around with your Modron core, save it, then clear it, and then rebuild and fiddle with stuff. And then you can always just load whatever whatever you were saving. And when you come over, it's going to, you know, it's got that big kind of preview, uh, which shows where all the pipes are and where they go. Uh, I think it's trying to tell us the amount of flow here, but I don't know that it's... I don't understand these colors completely because they're definitely not accurate to end game because I'm purple everywhere. So I'm not sure that this part is working correctly, but this looks... this is dead on. This is just basically a picture, right? Pretty cool, pretty cool. Oh, hey, go away. Uh, which champion buff is the most powerful? Which champion buff? Uh, the strongest buffer in the game currently, unless something changed and I, and I missed it, is Averin. Is mirror image buff because of the way you do sturdy mirrors, so you have four of them out at once. He can provide the biggest overall boost. Uh, but the biggest... But he that doesn't make him the number one support champion. The number one support champion is Krull. Crawl provides the biggest debuffs in the game uh, and the biggest chunk of gold find uh, based off how many stacks of, of how many instances of plagues you have going. But he has the, the highest potential. Uh, so Crawl is Crawl's broken, broken OP. Uh, I have to use the Torm's favor or not. I'm not actually they're sure what they're referring to for what they have to use it for. I'm not sure what that question's about. Uh, Exactly. I don't know the context. Torm's favor is your Sword Coast favor. Um, let me look at it on my other account so that you can see. Oops. Nope. There we go. Uh, so, like, I have earned some Torm's favor. I have spent it, and you want to spend it. You want to make sure that warnings are enabled, and you want to click the little green buttons until this pops up, and then you want to nope right out. Um, I have spent it to that point. Oh, hey, I had a little bit. See, I had a little bit still to go there. No, I didn't realize it. Uh, oh, I didn't. I didn't. I don't want to put it here because I, I'm using fast. I'm using slow attackers, and this is for fast attackers. But yeah. So you want to spend it because it's going to get you power, right? It's going to get you more power. But you just don't want to spend too much because that's going to take your gold find away. And gold is also power. So. Uh, uh, did you find that you hit kind of a wall with Strahd variants? I've hit the usual suspects like Visions of Strahd and wondered if it's just a matter of farming more favor or what. Um, no. No, I haven't. Uh, my Modron core helped out with that because I have a maxed Modron core now too. 
Uh, I found a Modron Quora gives me uh, over 80 levels of progress, like a fully epic Modron, like the 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 free core that you get. Uh, I think I think we had it giving me 85 specifically uh, on stream when we tested it. Um, so if you find you're falling short uh, and you don't have your core maxed out, that's going to be where you're going to get the extra power. Uh, otherwise, there's only two Strahd variants. Um, we really did Gar Wars Guide to Difficult Strahd variants last week, and we kind of talked about these. Um, there's only two Strahd variants that I believe aren't doable currently in the game, uh, and that's uh, Strahd's Show of Strength uh, and Strahd's Prisoners of Loth. Uh, one requires 15 plus strength, and one requires 16 plus strength. Um, and there just aren't many champions in the game currently that have uh, that much strength along with Strahd's required 13 plus intelligence. So until we get more of those, those two are probably only doable by some kind of manipulation of high amounts of favor to try to heal through the damage you're getting. I don't even know if that's possible. Yeah, those, those, those two, I think, are the only two that aren't doable in the current version of the game, if you have all of your level levers maxed, right? Like if you have if all your blessings, you have all the perks, you have your Modron core maxed, you've got, you know, epic gear on everyone. It doesn't need, don't, you don't need outrageous levels, item levels. I think, I think I've, I've kind of beat this horse to death. Um, I only have, uh, I think 80 levels on crawl, 80 average item levels, 80 on crawl and Averin and 99 on Zorbu. So it's not like I went, crazy on the most overpowered champions or anything. Um, they aren't even all qualified for Strahd anyway. So it's just, I have good, I have good gear on everyone and at least 80 item levels on everyone. So, uh, I know it's not dragon beta related, but I have a question about Azaka's adept traveler buff. It says exterior locations. What does that mean? Um, it means you're outside. So, uh, there's a little indicator right here that'll pop up if you're outdoors. Um, if it's not there, you're not outdoors. So if it's there, she should be providing the buff. Uh, it's not going to show up on everyone. I don't, I don't know if it shows it because it's a global buff, right? Let's go look, uh, double, let me double check. But they put that indicator, that outdoor indicator in specifically for Azaka. Uh, so Adept Traveler increases the damage of all champions by... X percent if they're in an exterior location. Yeah. So this is a, an all champs damage buff. So it's not going to show up as an incoming buff because it isn't, it isn't only for certain champions that qualify for it, which is what makes it show up on incoming uh, formation buffs. It is an outgoing buff to all champions if, if you qualify. And the way you know if you qualify is this right here. Um, do I wish they would update the UI to show all your global buffs somewhere? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, have they done that yet? No. Uh, can you do the time gate thingy as much as you want or how does it work? Uh, no, you can't do it as much as you want. Uh, this is a free time gate weekend, so you can do it once. You can come over here and you can click it. If it says free time gate, you can do it once. I did mine already. So now it says no gate currently open, right? Once I've done it, that's it. Um, however, I can then use time gate pieces to open a new one. If I want, that's called a manual time gate in the community. Um, it does cost you six time gate pieces. Uh, the upside to that though, like in a, in a natural time gate weekend, it's just going to give you uh, up at the top. It will give you three options and it'll say free. You can only choose from those options, but if you open it for six time gate pieces, you can pick anyone you want any event champion ever. Uh, which is why I tell you, if you have six and you don't own crawl, go get crawl. He doesn't need gear. Like you want to, you, you pick up the gear in his time gate, some gear in his time gate, but he doesn't need gear to be effective. So just as soon as you can pick up crawl, pick up crawl. Uh, but yeah, you get time gate pieces. Uh, you accrue one every five days, roughly. Uh, it's on a timer. You can't farm them. It's just you either get it on day five or you don't like, or well, you do. Uh, but it's like five or six. It depends on how you're killing things and your RNG, but you're going to get in around every five days. Uh, you can also buy one in the patron shop, but uh, if you're if you're new enough to ask how time gates work, you, you don't have patrons yet. So, But you'll get there eventually. Um, so with time gates, can you do them over and over? Is it better to try and push for favor rather than restarting as a beginner? I mean, again, you only get to do it once. 
Um, treat. I kind of went over this yesterday uh, on my Garver's Guide to Everything stream. You can check out the VOD there, but I'll do a quick version of it again. Um, when you go in, you're going to get uh, you're going to get three adventures. You're going to get two adventures and a variant. The first one is going to be determined by these little numbers up here, 50, 75. So you're going to have to get to 50 on your first run and 75 on your second. So I recommend pushing past 50 and getting as much favor, you know, getting some favor on that first run, pushing past 75, getting some favor on the second run, because you're going to get randomly assigned a variant that could be, it could be anywhere from, you know, 75 to 175. I mean, it, you're, you could, you could end up being pushing, you know, real far. Uh, if you don't have enough favor to push that deep, then you do a free play to get more favor just so you can complete the variant. At that point, you can just bail. Hey, claim a free gold chest and watch Aaron M. Evans' Extra Life D&D stream right now. Wow. Really? <laughs> I'm talking here, Sienny. No, but that's, yeah. She is doing, I, I'm i going to have to watch the VOD later. She is doing her Dragonborn dating game uh, right now, which I ah, can't wait. I can't wait. Uh, Krull's coming up in the event in December, right? Yes, he is. Um, but... Uh, I've got a note coming in from Jay. Uh, Krell is coming up in December. Uh, but if you have a manual time gate before then, or he shows up in your natural time gate before then, just grab him. Just grab Not if it's like a couple days before, but uh, he does such outrageous work for you. Um, I call it the circle of loot. I coined that yesterday. Uh, he provides debuffs, which lets you push further, which gives you more gold. But he also has, he also gives you more gold off the things that you kill. So it's just this cycle of loot where you're, you're getting more power and more gold and you're able to level up your champions to give you more power, which gets you more gold. And it just goes on and on forever. Um, so get him right away, because if you could get him now, even you're going to go so much further in the next couple of weeks than you ever could have before. Uh, and so why not? Why not? What kind of favor is required for the final evergreen campaign champion? Uh, final isn't a word we use because they're going to release evergreen champions regularly. Uh, the most recent one they've released is Alcoria. I don't know how much favor uh, she's going to need. I'm currently, we're currently, that's the milestone for my Marzawar account. Um, I have about E18 favor there, I believe, in Helms. So that's Waterdeep, the Waterdeep campaign. Uh, and, and everything shows is green, so I'm going to attempt it as soon as, as, soon as I, I do all the required variants. Um, she needs a lot more than Dragon Mate. She needs you to complete 45 adventures or variants. Um, but yeah, I still think E18 is probably going to be the target uh, for Waterdeep for Alcoria. So. Uh, they alternated the pop-ups between the two of you. Ah, yeah. That's okay. No, I knew I knew it when I woke up this morning. I saw the tweet from Aaron. Uh, if you if you don't know who Aaron M. Evans is, she is the author of the Brimstone Angels saga. We have uh, the Brimstone Angels in the game. That's Farida and Havilar. Uh, where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Why can I never do this right? There's Farida, uh, and Havi's over here. Havi's the tank. Farida's the DPS. Um. But yeah, she's also uh, one of the people on Champions of Lore on Mondays. So the stream on the CNE channel where they talk about all kinds of different lore and how it relates to the game. She's fantastic. Uh, they've done a song for, uh, uh, I think it was both of them. I think it was just, they did both a song for ha Javi and Farida uh, on Bardic Inspiration, the show on Tuesdays with Jason Charles Miller and Dylan, where we, we create where we, I say we, because we do, we create songs for champions in the game because uh, chat gets to participate and offer up lines and potential lines for the songs. Uh, and Jason does the music and sings everything and it's fantastic. Um, but they did Brimstone Angels Go, 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 which is still one of my favorite songs. Uh, it's basically an anime uh, intro opening song. It's fantastic. Uh... Does Esmeralda's ability work with Farida's Hellish Rebuke? So Hellish Rebuke, uh, potentially it could, but here's the thing. Uh, Hellish Rebuke triggers on anyone uh, like adjacent to Farida, I believe, uh, or within two if you choose that spec. Uh, but Esmeralda is only going to give the bonuses for whoever's in her column. Um, so normally you wouldn't have Esmeralda in a tank line, which is usually what has Hellish Rebuke is triggering off of. Except for in a fight like Valindra, where it would be triggering off everyone. Uh, 
there's a whole other formation strategy. Well, you know what? I mean, we can do that. There's a whole other formation strategy for uh, AOE enemies when you're using uh, Farida. And let's just talk about it. Uh, so in this situation, you would use Hella Tribute now affects champions within two slots of Farida. Uh, they will still return damage using Farida's DPS. So uh, basically, whenever someone gets... Seriously. Whenever somebody gets attacked and they're within two slots of Farida, uh, they're going to pop off her Hellish Rebuke. So we're going to take her. We're going to move her into the middle. Uh, and we're going to use it like this. Yeah, this should work. So uh, she will trigger her Hellish Rebuke for everyone now. For the entire group. So when, when Valindra throws that AoE down on everyone... She's going to be like, nah, fam, and like throw back damage against Valindra, and it should just erase Valindra, basically. That's one of the things you can do, but but it requires a bit of a suboptimal placement for her, right? Because she is here in the middle, and we know that you get the most damage if, if they're up here, right? So she's at E129, he's at E133, right? But if I move her up here, I'm only getting, uh, you know, I get most of, and I'm missing one, but then she does more damage, right? But we're just going to put her here. Because, again, damage shouldn't be what we're missing in this fight. Um, and we'll watch what happens. But, yeah, it's it should trigger with Hellish Rebuke as well. Unless, let me see exactly what it says here. If the enemy has armor, hit space, health, champions has armor, remove an extra chunk when dealing damage to them. Yeah, so, yeah, it should work for Hellish Rebuke as well. So let's just watch her... Get annihilated. Uh, call down. We need to see it's going to come off the AoE. So Valindra needs to call down an AoE at some point for it to work. Any day now, Valindra. Seriously. Any Anytime you want to do it. Come on. Any, any. She's like, no, I see Farida. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> Ah, seriously. Come on. Am I going to have to do this over again just to show it? Look, we stunned her, folks. We stunned her. That's Dinar, by the way. Dinar can stun. At any point. Are you going to AoE us? At any point, Valindra. You're ruining my show. <laughs> Man, she's just mean. She's so mad that we're beating her over and over again. She doesn't want to she doesn't want to cooperate. Oh my god. Another thing that we didn't talk about and we'll talk about right now is you can put dritz in your formation. If you do have the damage to put dritz in, a little suboptimal. There it goes. Oh yeah, and they just they just deleted uh, Dritz on one of his attacks can cause the enemy to miss. That's helpful against Valindra too. Again, it just, it depends on who you have available. You can try a lot of, there's a lot of different ways to unlock Valindra, but there we go. Yeah. So Hedler's Rebuke is working when she does throw down the AOE. Is there a list of the icons that appear on enemies anywhere? No. No, you just got to learn them. You just got to learn them. Uh... Can you get golden gear from chest? No. No. The, the only kind of guild you can get from a chest is you'll have a random chance to get a shiny out of a chest. But golden comes from the store, either the cash shop or uh, the patron shop. Uh, each patron currently offers one piece of golden equipment, uh, like Mertz's for Alcoria. Is one familiar enough on the field, enough for Modron automation in the background? Does putting more on the field help in any way? Um, I don't even think you should do that, if I'm being honest. Um, potentially, well, so here's the, here's the calculation, and this is why I say I don't think you should put familiars on the field in background. Um, the calculation is, can you kill 25 enemies inside of one minute? That's the calculation they're running. Uh, so they're looking at your damage per second uh, compared to uh, the, the health of the enemies 
Uh, and if that enemy would get to your tank and kill it before you could kill, like, and there's some kind of, you know, calculation about like how quickly it could get to your tank and do damage. Would it kill your tank before you killed it? Um, I find it's just so much easier to just put my familiars on some champions and let the champions do everything because what you're normally using familiars for, uh, is to kill things very quick and move forward very fast. Uh, but that's not something that happens in the background party again, because it's locked into this calculation of, can you kill 25 things inside of one minute? If yes, progress a zone after an estimated minute has gone by. If no, uh, Allow a little more time to, oops, sorry, allow a little more time to try to kill them. And if that still doesn't work, allow a little more time. This is why you end up getting stuck on certain levels. Like if you get to a barrier level, which happens in Mad Wizard, right? They have those barricades that show up that have uh, hit based uh, segments that you've got to clear out. You can only clear, uh, you can only click off a segmented health point once every six seconds. So. You're not clearing that in a minute. You're not. You're, that's, you're just not, right? That's that's only that's only six segments, and they're usually fifty. So, uh, it's just better to have. It's just better to load in a, a party. Like if if we hop over here, uh, I will I will show you what I use for my background party that I have not had any issues with. It it cycles. It rotates. It. It doesn't go super slow. You know, it seems to work at, at exactly the speed I would expect it to. You know, a little slower than, than if I was offline, but uh, I run a Torgar background party. Is everything set up? Yes. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, we, we kill someone and that's enough. And then it's, and now we've got a more than enough. And then it loads in. It didn't load in the correct formation, but it does when it's in the background party. This is the formation I use because I just... Again, I put my fam I put my familiars on the champions to level them up uh, instead of, you know, on the field. And I find this gives me fantastic progress. It uses the, you know, it uses the calculation. It allows the calculation to run smoothly. And it doesn't, the calculation then doesn't have to check, well, am I killing with the clip, the familiars or am I killing with the champions? And some people want to just not use champions at all in the background, but you've got them. Even if they're subpar, why not throw them in? Like, I, I don't understand. Uh, yeah, I just find that it works much more smoothly if I... That wasn't the button I wanted. Uh, if I actually put champions on the field instead of using familiars on the field. Who does slot... Who does three slot better omen or... Oh, that's a weirdly worded question. Uh, who is better in slot three, omen or Artemis? Uh, I would say omen. I'm thinking that's the question you're trying to ask. Uh, Artemis is a very finicky DPS, uh, and I don't know that we really have the people to support him optimally. He's, he's usable, but is he, uh, you know, really great? Uh, not yet. Uh, he requires other champions to be great. Uh, Omen can just go in and, and be amazing support. I just started a week ago. Minsk does so much more damage than Jarlax. So does that change or am I doing something wrong? No, you're just at the point where he probably has better gear than Jarlaxel. So, you know, it, it only takes about a week for you to get decent, you know, get like at least all white gear and maybe even all green gear on all champions and maybe have some good luck with gold chests and maybe it landed on Minsk and away you go. The issue is with Minsk and why I don't use him as a DPS on new player accounts um, is Hitch can't support him. Because Hitch buffs uh, Charisma and Minsk has none. Uh, Boo has a lot, but, you know, unfortunately Boo isn't the stat sheet. Um, so I try to, I try to just use, I just, I don't know. I have Minsk, I use Minsk as a support for his favorite enemy and his all champs damage stuff. I don't use him as a DPS, but you can use whatever you want. I just think Hitch ends up working out better. Uh, but yeah, Jarlaxle is just your starter DPS and... At some point, you're going to move from Jarlaxle on to somebody else. If, if that's if you want to make that mince, go right ahead. Uh, I think I like Hitch better. Uh, there was a there was a small period of time on my new player account where Jamila was actually better, uh, but now that the gear is equal, that was because she got a couple uh, perfect epics like for her self damage. Uh, but now Hitch is just kind of caught up. So yeah, 
use whoever you want for your DPS. Just, you know, try different ones out sometimes. Uh, are soft caps set in stone or are they raised periodically? They get, they get added, uh, to every now and then. Um, we haven't seen any additions to them lately because, because we got a Modron core recently. And like I said, that gave me 85 levels of progress once it was fully maxed out. Uh, that's a lot more than, than a soft cap is going to do. So we're getting dangerously to the close to the point where we're hitting that, where people can just viably get to 1100 and get temporarily banned. And the problem with the, they're, they're not being mean when they're banning you at 1100. It's just that the game breaks after that point mathematically. Um, and they have a build that they have built a thing that's fixed that for like Steam and WebGL. But until it's until they have a build that's ready to fix that on all platforms, uh, they can't really push it out. Uh, and until then, we're probably not going to see a soft cap increase. How do you unlock the second feat slot on champs when the level requirement is beyond the soft cap? Uh, yeah, like I said, just switch from upgrade to anything other than upgrade uh, and over level. Uh, oh, yeah, we were kind of pushing through. Um, can you have a quick overview of the formation and specs? Uh, I mean, I did everything earlier. Uh, Nihali's in Devotion, Dinar is in, oh yeah, Hitch is in Charismatic. Oh, in this situation, Farida's in, in the one that does her Hellish Rebuke. What is it? Uh, Dark One's Luck. Uh, Esmeralda is in Stay on Target and Smells Like a Trap. Uh, Makos is in Dark Blessing. Ashara is in Humans because uh, she's buffing Hitch. Uh, the second one doesn't really matter. I think I picked Exotic Races. Calliope is in College of Lore so that she shields more often. And Tyrell is quite clearly in Wild Shape. Uh, some of the gold coins getting dropped by the mobs are silver. What does that mean? Uh, it's not silver. It's platinum. Uh, so there are certain champions that will... Uh, cause enemies to drop more gold like when for whatever reason when they die and when they do uh, they drop as platinum coins uh, there are also some champions that cause uh, that like steal gold from you and and when that gold drops the gold that they've stolen is represented by kind of a, a purplish or a pinkish looking coin uh, what's my second manual time gate must have so on my new player account uh, I feel like the current proper order with the way the game is, like if you're trying to just optimally pick your time gates, and again, you don't have to, do whatever you want. But if you're worried about like optimal performance and optimal progression, crawl is number one. And two and three are a toss up between Deacon and Shandy. Pick whichever one you want. Uh, those two are speed champions. They do not need gear. So all three of those choices are... Uh, kind of gear agnostic. They don't care what kind of gear you have to do their amazing things that you're using them for. So Crawl doesn't need gear. He just cares about his feats. So you can pick him up from a time gate and use him effectively. Deacon and Shandy are both speed champions and they offer their speed uh, unlinked to any gear they might have. Um, so the reason I, I would say this is kind of the order I would prefer um, is because Picking up crawl is going to give you that circle of loot where you're just able to progress super far. I can run, you know, 400 levels deep easily now in, in Tomb of Annihilation and Water Deep, and I could probably go back and do it in Sword Coast. Um, it's just, but without speed champions to get me through a lot of those early levels, it takes forever to go three to 400 levels. Uh, so for your, to keep your pace of progression up and to keep things you know, faster and to move you through the game faster, picking up Deacon and Shandy next, uh, give you those speed slot options so that at the beginning of your runs, you can slot them in. And then when their feet of speed effects start wearing off and you're hitting a wall, you can swap them in for actual damage champions and then push on to whatever your wall is. Um, I don't know what, I don't know what my fourth and fifth would be yet anymore at this point, but those, I, those I feel like are my, or would be my manual time gate choices starting off. Um, you can also keep an eye out again, you, if, depending on what your priority is. I picked up crawl first. I picked up, picked up Deacon second. Uh, as it stands, I'm definitely picking up Shandy third uh, because of the way things fell. A Shandy was offered up in my natural time gate this weekend, but I picked Omen instead because I needed a swap in uh, his slot, slot three. 
uh, for multi-party Modron. Now I'm only missing slot four and Sentry arrives on Wednesday with Feast of the Moon for slot four. So after I pick up Sentry, I will be able to, on my new player account, uh, dive into multi-party Modron. So you can always you can always swap things up if if it if I hadn't ended up getting a slot three uh, in as a natural time gate option, uh, I would have ended up spending my third manual time gate uh, getting that option. Uh, as it is, uh, I don't have to, and now I can put it on Shandy. Would we trained for this be a better choice for Esmeralda to beat more fast Valindra? Uh, I will respec and see, but I feel like no. But we'll see. So we stay on target because undead. We've trained for this. Now affect all champions in the formation. No. Well, mm, I'm going to still say, well, maybe. Wait. Pause. Prepare. Hold on. So prepare is the one that would remove it. Hmm. If you can do it without her debuff, because here's the here's the here's the thing is smells like a trap. Make sure that her debuff is on everyone. So if you have the damage, again, if you know you have the damage, and you don't need her debuff, you could do without. You could you could just make her debuff random, uh, and choose. We've trained for this to get to hopefully have everybody chunking armor, but. I feel like that's you'd have to have crawl. You'd have to have crawl backing up Esmeralda in this case, because 400 levels deep. Usually, it's only your DPS removing armor chunks from a boss at 400. So having it affect everybody seems kind of pointless. And the only re the only way it might work is if you have crawl and she gets, you know, 40 stacks of pain on her. Uh, otherwise I just feel like it's smells like a trap just for the ease of, of use. Uh, we only got about eight minutes left. Let's see what we can answer. Oh, Maelstrom saying the colors in the thing are based off the rarity of the pipe used. Yeah, I don't want that. I want to know what my buffs are. So there's feedback for them. See any, I don't, in this... In this save preview, if we look at this, uh, I don't want to know. I mean, I guess that's fine if you show me the, the color of the pipes, but I want to know that uh, it's not. There we go. Uh, come on. What's happening is I'm killing things and moving stages in the background in, the, in my actual party, and it's not staying up. So this is a bug. I can't even look at this. Okay. I want to know what it ends at. I want to know that I've got purple endpoints, like outputs. I don't care what color pipes I've used there, personally. I want to know how effective was that build. Uh, I haven't unlocked my Modron core yet. Is there a particular video that helps explain it best for someone new to it? Um, yeah, there's uh, on the YouTube channel, there is Garwa's Guide to uh, Multi-Party and Modron Automation. That'd, that'd probably do it. Um... I shouldn't have had to redo this. This is weird. That's buggy. Um, at some point, we may do another deep dive just into the pipe game itself. But hmm. but yeah, the basic general stuff is going to be on the YouTube channel. If you're missing a piece of gear, what's the best way, if possible, to target gear for them? Can't seem to get Artemis' last piece of gear. Uh, Grinban, is it is it an epic? If it's an epic, you just got to keep opening more gold chests. Um, if it's not an epic, if you're talking about your collection and you're trying to fill in a hole, you just got to keep trying, right? Like I went back and filled in all the holes in my collections and the whites were the hardest to fill in. And basically what I did is did time gates to like level 700. Cause that gave me seven silver chests and I got it that way. Right. So you just got to keep getting chests that are going to drop that piece of gear. Uh, do you use both of Averin's 40% feats or stack mirror image ones? Ooh, good question. Uh, I do both of the 40%. Yeah. Uh, I think I do that because math, right? But I don't know. 
I mean, that's basically, yeah. You want the you want the the highest number for each. So double forties. Uh, when you earn global perks, do they affect all champions or just the ones that that patron favors? All champions, all champions that qualify for the perk, right? So the qualifications are listed. Oh, come on, <laughs> click on it. Uh, like this is damage of all champions, right? It's pretty straightforward. Uh, this increases healing by tanks, so that's only tanks. This is the damage of neutral champions, so only neutral champions, right? So yeah, it's going to tell you what it qualifies for. It, that, that, the perks are pretty clear. Patron perks are pretty clear. Blessings aren't always, but perks are. Uh, because perks are the most recent iteration, right? Uh, about to start the split, the split the party run. Wish me luck. I've watched the guide again today to prepare as much as possible. Here goes. Good luck, Kofinia. You should you should have it. Again, uh, the, the hardest part of split the party is level 15. And if you need to add a full formation to get past level 15, do it. Just be smart about who you add because you may get stuck with them until the rest of through the rest of the run. Uh, do you think it's preferred to change around which campaign you're playing or to try and complete everything available in one before moving to the next? So uh, my new player count is basically what I answer that with. So we, we only went one global blessing deep into Sword Coast. That was basically unlocking Drift. Then we went fully into Tomb of Annihilation because... The goal, the milestone wasn't blessings. The milestone was unlocking those evergreen champions. Uh, and we got all those blessings along the way. And then we went into Waterdeep. I got all of the blessings within seven adventures in Waterdeep. Uh, if I wanted more power for some reason, I, I don't need it yet, but if for some reason I wanted more power, I could probably max out my blessings at this point in Sword Coast on one run. Like with the favor, with the gold and favor I earned on one run. So... You know, you can't, if you feel you're, you need more power for something, you can definitely hop from one to the other and get them, but it's not required. The global power blessings are really going to help you in events and time gates, but unless you're having problems completing those, uh, I don't know if it's worth it necessarily to just force yourself to get all the blessings first. Uh, and specifically, we are calling out Sword Coast, Tomb of Annihilation, and Waterdeep, because... Avernus and Icewind Dale are hard campaigns, and you will not max your blessings there quickly. You just won't. Um, so you don't don't worry about those. Tomb of Annihilation is the easiest campaign, uh, and you can max your blessings out the easiest there. Uh, I think Waterdeep is probably second, uh, and Sword Coast is currently third. Um, Avernus would is next up in that line, and and Icewind Dale is probably last. Right. How fast can gems be farmed without using potions? Pretty quickly. I can't give you an exact number. There's people in the Discord that can that can probably tell you exactly what it is, but people people have mad wizard farming for gems down to a science uh, at this point, so you can hit up them and talk about it. I just use speed champions and multi-hit champions and let it do its thing. I don't I don't uh, get super worried about exactly how much or if I'm if I'm getting the most out of every run, because my power, I feel, is fine in the game right now. Um, again, my lowest uh, average item level on all champions is about 80, or is 80. Um, and I have all of them at least at that level. So that's kind of, I don't worry about, beyond that, I don't worry about a lot of like super maximum mega, op mega optimization because I have filled, I've, I've completed, if I come over here, uh, the, the reason this is at 99% is because we just got two more variants in Icewind Dale. I just haven't gone and done them yet. So I've got 150 done here, 150 done here. Coming up on 150 with Strahd, and I think there's only two that you can't do with him. So, yeah. If I can complete all the content in the game uh, with an average, a minimum average item level on some of the the key champions people say are the best, Krull and Averin at 80 and Zorbu's at, like, 99, then I think... I think that's. I think everybody can do a pretty good job without going overboard. Uh, let me see if there's anything super specific because we're out of time. Any advice for who I should get in Calliope's spot if I'm looking to spend time gate pieces? Briv. Briv. Briv's a speed champion and a solid tank for the middle game. So you want Briv. Everybody else is suboptimal for what they do compared to Calliope or Briv. So there you go. Uh, 
Someone please tell me how to get the Tyrell skin with the moose shape. Uh, that was a, a, a freebie they gave us um, when they announced the Icewind Dale campaign. So it's probably going to show up in the gem store eventually, if it isn't already. So gem shop, gem items, see if it's here. If not, it'll probably show up there eventually. All right, folks, that's going to be it. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I will catch you next week. Uh, be safe, wear your masks, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer, all the, you know, smart science stuff, right? Um, and I will see you next week. I'm going to go watch the VOD for the Dragonborn dating game, uh, with Aaron M. Evans, <laughs> because of course I am. Bye everyone.